you hear that? It's a ghost. <laughs> Probably a reincarnation. Don't worry. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction to the Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Instagram Twitter, Twitter all juicy content. Juiciness dripping Thank all over your Patreon drips. Thank you for following Patreon and Twitter again. But it's called BANG! Follow us on personal YouTube channels and subscribe for more. Yeah. Today we're doing a movie review, everybody. Uh, welcome back to Spooky Month. Uh, and we watched a fantasy musical mystery is what it's classified as. Really? I saw something that said it was a uh, paranormal romance. I like that better. I like that a lot I like better. that better. It's a paranormal romance. Um, but it's the 1958 film, one of the oldest films we watch. I don't think it's the oldest, but one of the one oldest. One of. It's the it's oldest film we watch. Qualifies as a classic. Uh, Madhumati. Uh, and uh, we were recommended by some people for uh, Halloween month. I thought it'd be cool to get a kind of a classic in there. Uh, and it does have some spooky elements to it. It does. Uh, for sure. Um, so it's uh, from 19... Dilip Kumar. Yes. So 1958, directed right. by... Uh, uh, ben Al Roy, is that right? Yes, yep. and he produced that as well. Written by Ratwick Gatek and Rajinder Singh Bedi. And starring Dilip Kumar. Um, yeah, uh, forgive, this will be a butchering of, of her, the name. Uh, Vijayan Timale. And then uh, Johnny, so sorry. Johnny, Walker Johnny Walker as well, who I think is probably our third classic it of is him. He seems to always be playing the exact him. same yeah. character. <laughs> It's like, Char it's like Charles Chaplin playing the tramp. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it, it's 100 Spence Older Review. It came out in 1958. Yeah, if you haven't seen this, that's uh, I also wanted... It's it, like us. I wanted another excuse to watch a Dilip Kumar film. Yeah. Uh, since uh, we, 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 we liked him so much in um, <laughs> uh, Mughali Azam. But Rick, your initial thoughts, please. Um, I think... It felt a little bit long because I still had a Dune hangover. <laughs> don't go see Dune, guys. Just don't. If you love the books, you might like it, but then the books probably would bore me spitless, too. Um, I really liked it. Yeah. Um, it's everything you want from a classic movie. It. I was impressed with a lot of the technical stuff in the film. I was impressed with the cinematography for the day. I was impressed with the visual effects for the day. The set design... Just when that castle was spooky, it was, it was, it was as good old, as old school Universal, man. Dracula. Yes, yeah, Frankenstein. Frankenstein is what I mean. Yeah. Exactly. It yeah. just, it had that exact same feel and those moments where everything's just quiet. Um, it felt a little long, but I really do think that was my, because Dune is a long film. Mm -hmm. And I had a Dune hangover. And it's old school Bollywood. It's old so school And I knew that, but that would my... You kind of anticipated being a minimum, like, a three-hour film. Yeah. I thought the story <laughs> was really good. Yeah. Um, but I will say, I was telling this to Indrani again, and I said this after anything we've seen him do. He's shockingly grounded and real for somebody in 1958. Mm -hmm. There's a moment where he's he's walking, and he's he's talking to Johnny Walker, and he gets something in his eye. And most actors in the day would say, okay, cut, I got something in my eye. But he did a Brando thing mm -hmm. and methoded it and just was like, oh, I got something in my eye. That yeah. happens whenever that happened. And they yeah. kept it. Yeah. So I liked it. Yeah. Uh, I liked it as well. Uh, there, there were parts that I I wish weren't there, but it's 1958. And it's, it's basically the parts. Of, I didn't like the fact that they just did this flashback. I thought it could have stood on its own. Well, I, you're not a big fan of flashbacks. No, I'm not. But I do give it grace. It's 1958, so it wasn't yeah. a trope back then. Right. It is a trope. Like, if it came out now, I'd be like, really, we're going to do the whole doo -doo 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 and flashback thing? And because it's a trope, and he's right in this regard, because a lot of folks that do the flashback thing, it's a weak excuse in storytelling. I understand it because of the reincarnation aspect Correct. to it. Yeah. I totally get it. And uh, the fact that, obviously, she's been they keep getting reincarnated and finding each other. And to fall in love again, yeah, essentially, which I know you probably love that whole. Uh, I, I did that and whole aspect. I love that, it. and I love. We'll get to it in a second. I, I also love the twist at the end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I do. I like if I was doing it, I think like him falling off the castle mm -hmm. would have been a perfect ending. I know. I thought that would have been <laughs> absolutely wonderful. Yeah, because uh, well, one, it's a cool shot, you, and two, it's like it's like fitting. Like he's gonna go be with her now. Yeah, and I get that they brought it back, and they were together in their next life, oh, and all that kind of stuff. But, well, now that you said that, I <laughs> one of the most ridiculous moments that I just said, okay, I'm gonna let it go. I'm just gonna let it go. Is the last, the very last line in the film. Oh, he sees her get off. 
he's so happy to see his girl says to her we we're going to be with each other for eternity oh, and he forgot and he, he had... forgot she had a baby <laughs> yeah. I was like... he looks in and sees his child he's like oh i forgot <laughs> Yeah, I thought that was funny. Wow. Well. Oh. I was like, really? You forgot you had a kid? <laughs> Red flags there, yeah. lady. Yeah. <laughs> Literally he forgot he remembered, you had a he, kid. he remembered past life romance, yeah. but he doesn't remember his own child. But I thought it was a really, for a two hour, 45 minute film that it is, I thought it was a really engaging film. And it was really simple to follow as well. Really simple to follow. Um, and I thought it was really well done, especially for a 1958 film. Uh, Dil Kumar, uh, we saw it in so Mulder Zam. Uh, and it, it solidified in this that man, I, I get why people call him the Brando or Absolutely he brought do. the method to I see Indian it. cinema. Yep. I totally see it. Totally see it. Because at this time, which is one of the biggest problems I have with like classic films is the style of acting that was in not only Bollywood, but Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, that was like this old, big, uh, kind of, I don't know how to fully describe it, but it's like this, it wasn't, uh, it's the silent, real. it's the silent. They couldn't help it at the time because there were there were several contributors to it, but silent films required you to be bigger than life because you're conveying so much. It's basically theater acting on screen. Yeah, and over the top theater acting, which at the time, when you don't have electronic microphones and anything of that nature, yeah. you need to project and you need to be bigger. They'll tell you this in a lot of things. You need to, the person in the back row needs to see you and feel you. So it needs to be big. Whereas in a movie theater, you can just raise an eyebrow and the person in the back row is going to see the whole thing. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I, I think he, he's grounded. He's so grounded. Yep. And I love that. Obviously, mean, so that's, that's the style I love. And uh, is so different from his character as well in, um, yeah. in, in Mughali Azam. So I'm really excited to see even more of him. Me too. Whether it's Devdas. I will see if I like a version of Devdas. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's a good chance if it's Dilip Kumar. You very well may. Compared to the acting, because the problem I had with Devdas wasn't the overall film, it was the uh, god awful acting. Uh, <laughs> but I, I loved I loved what he did. I loved um, the rage he brought when, when he went to beat up the king. Yeah. And then kind of him going kind of crazy, but it wasn't like stereotypical. It was like, no, I legitimately I thought this guy was probably going crazy, mad because yeah. he was in love and trying to find this person that killed his, his, yeah. his love. And I. I don't know if you noticed that the stunt work with the king fall from the stair yeah, on the freaking hardwood floor. That was good. That was really strong. Yeah. Uh, for, nine, once again, oh my 1958. Goodness. Yeah. Uh, everything that you do back then, it, if it can look like something that would have been done now, it's crazy. And, and it must have been a jaw dropper, that last sequence with her when she's on the stairs and he's talking to her and he's realizing who she is. And then she walks in. And they're both on screen. Is that the twist that you like? Yeah, I love the fact that it wasn't the other girl; it was actually her mm -hmm. I, back haunting. I figured it was I when he was like, that. "You buried me, or you buried me." Blah 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 blah. And I was like, "That other girl doesn't know that." Yeah. <laughs> how does how does she know that? And then so yeah, it was it was a great reveal, but it was also technically great. It must have been jogged, especially for any younger audience members. For back in the day, that was pretty flawless special effects for the day. Yeah, uh, and her as well. I thought, let's say her name again, please. Yeah, I, I'll butcher it. Forgive me for please not knowing how to properly pronounce her name. It, it, it's um, Vijayan Thimala. Vijayan Thimala. That's the closest I'm going to get right now. Help, you can help me. I'll be, over time, I'll get it right. It looks um, like... Uh, oh, she's in Devnas 2. No, Devnas 1. <laughs> I don't okay. know. I don't know if she's the main love interest. I can't. Uh, the Let's character see, is. Uh, I don't remember who that character is. I don't either. Um, you will have to re revisit it. But yeah, apparently she's in Devdas with, with him, uh, which was three years prior to this. So everybody who loved them in Devdas must have been really excited to see this. And I read that this did incredibly well. Why does it say it has a runtime of 110? That is not what the runtime is. That is way, way off. Um, <laughs> everybody must have been really excited, and I read that the, the, the film did really, really well Yeah, when it came out. Um, and I can see why. So they had really good chemistry, them two together. Yeah, she did. has great screen presence. She yeah. has that classic, uh, beautiful woman cla of, of Hollywood feel to her. Yeah. Like, she, she has great... Uh, the screen loves her. Mm -hmm. uh, and, Very playful. And her and Dillip had great chemistry together. Agreed. Uh, and I really enjoyed watching them. I did too. And I also loved 
the music, oh, all of it, score and songs. We've, we've reacted, reacted to a couple. I think two. Yeah. But there were some other ones in there, like the Scorpion one. Yes. I love the I Scorpion did too. one. That one was I like, did too. like the big showstopper in the middle of a film. Yeah. Uh, that one was really, really fun. I thought all the, the songs, and I think it was sung by Lada, right? It, I'm, if it wasn't, I'm shocked, because that's who I assumed it was the whole time. Uh, so it was, it was, if it wasn't Lada, it was her uh, sister, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I loved all the songs. Um, and there were so many, which I think I helped just, carry the film along. And I just picked up on something. Mm. The story is written with Guttak, who's Cloud Cap's star. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh. So he, he wrote that one that we saw. No, he directed Cloud Cap's star, I think. Oh, and wrote it. Yeah. Wow. Well, there you go. No he's wonder a, I like the story so much. He's a good writer. And for the time, this is a really interesting story. And it's because, obviously, I know, especially with Hindu mythology, the, the reincarnation is a sure, big, it's a big standard storyline, thing, right? Yeah. Um, but I don't know if this was one of the first ones that kind of delved into that in film. In cinema, yeah. I don't uh, know. Because I, I know it's, it's happened more now, but obviously in 1958, there weren't a ton of tropes. Right. <laughs> there exactly. It was... So early in the industry, right? It's you, 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 there's not really the tropes, the the stereotypical tropes uh, at that time. So for the for that time where uh, a, a guy comes in, he falls in love with a girl who lives in in a village, and and then that basically the guy come, the king comes in and rapes her and murders her, right? Essentially, right? Yeah. Or attempts to rape her. Attempts right? to rape her, and she runs and dies. Because dies, him. and then there's this story of reincarnation, ghosts. Uh, I actually really enjoyed the comedy scene of the the guy <laughs> trying to uh, that whole thing with Johnny, too, Johnny, with Johnny Walker, Johnny Walker, and the 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 guy who was trying to do the I forget what the the word is, but cast out the the, the demon. Yeah, actually. he was doing his spell, and they're saying louder. That whole thing and they was thought great. He went into the cat. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah, which I no, thought was really funny. I, did I actually really enjoyed him, Johnny Walker, in this as well. I did. This too. is one of my favorite, even though he's. Everything we've seen him in, he's playing this same character. It, he is, and, and it's, he, if there's ever a story that's made about that man's life, it has to be played by B.J. Ross. Yes, he I reminds agree me so, so much, much of B.J. Ross. Absolutely agree, and it's funny that I enjoy him opposite somebody so grounded, so grounded yeah. as Dilip com Kumar, complete opposite. Because he's the complete opposite, and I, I wonder if it's tempting to work with Johnny Walker back then, and and if you have to fight to not be over the top with him because it's he's so much fun. Mm -hmm. He's he can get away with it in the same way that that um, if you watch some of the great silent film actors do what they do and they just deadpan or for example, it's not as over the top, but the kind of fourth wall breaking ridiculousness. Whenever Stan Laurel does something and Oliver Hardy looks at him and then looks at the camera and just stares at the audience, he goes, mm. that kind of not real stuff. He completely gets away with that. Yeah. Um... I also thought the the actor who played the dad was oh really yeah good he was well, well cast um, gi giant giant yeah. yeah I thought he was well cast I thought he did a good job he had great big father screen presence intimidating yeah um, and the end the the, <laughs> the king was good too yeah I liked him I liked him uh, he had like pencil thin mustache <laughs> I loved the... I loved when she comes into the room thinking it's gonna be Dilip Kumar. And she pulls the blanket down, and he's got this creepy smile on his face. It's like, she pulls it down, and he's like, yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed the storyline of, like, when she popped back up, and it was the other girl. Yeah. But he thought it was her. That was a good twist. I was like, what is going on here? Yeah. What? And so it, I was like, is this the reincarnated girl? Is And then that whole twist, I really enjoyed that. Uh, so for, like, like I said, 1958, I thought it was really, really ingenious, really, uh, what they did. I just, I think this part, the flashback, could have stood on its own. Like, it didn't need the front and back part. You mean as just the film itself? Like, the front part where obviously they got stranded, they went to the castle, and he was like, Yeah. I remember well, this place, blah, you, blah, blah. How do you tell a reincarnation story? Uh, you mean just do it sequentially, let them die, and then come to the future and see them now? Just don't need them. I don't just need, eliminate the literally, reincarnation. Story. Literally start at the the, the flashback, but literally but, just the, that story. I know, I get why you, they do it, but you can't even have the payoff at the end unless you're t you're basing it on reincarnation. I think that it's more powerful to just have him die 
and you get that they're going to be reincarnated together. And forget the duplicate girl? No, 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 no. The only parts I want to eliminate are the front part where he starts telling the story. Right? Okay. Uh, so you can eliminate basically all that. Oh, I got starts, you. Okay, okay. And then okay, eliminate okay. the end and eliminate when he the finds end. her again. I get why they did it. I like that. I totally understand. They fell in love. They they get reincarnated and they always fall in love because they're meant to be together forever and forever on every yeah. single life, right? I get it. I just don't prefer that. Uh, <laughs> I prefer his death and then the film ends. Well, because you would prefer every film with the main guy to die no. at the end. No, it's just, it's stronger. You, know, you would. It's a you stronger would. end. It, you, you would like everything. You'd, you'd prefer it if, like, I'm trying to think of the most optimistic. You'd like it if Nacho Libre ended with everybody getting shot in the head. That'd be cool, though. See? Yeah, that'd be Yeah, cool. you would like that. Uh, <laughs> Anarchist. <laughs> I, I liked it. I enjoyed the message. But I, it's just the what I would have preferred was like if it was made now i would be like that's dumb don't do that just leave it the way it was it was nice the way it was just the middle part take out the bookend i like it because then you couldn't have had the whole i forgot my son part <laughs> that's true <laughs> that's true you couldn't have had that <laughs> but yeah overall i thought it was real nice uh, a, a great uh, classic uh if you didn't know we are going to do classic month in january uh and so what should be some of the classics that we watch. Give us more of these for two. Dilip and uh, what's her name? Uh, yeah, I don't want to mispronounce it a third time. Uh, the girl, the girl, his love interest. Yes. Uh, it's a difficult name. I know she's a legend for you guys. Uh, forgive me for not knowing her. I enjoyed well. her. Um, so what should be the next of both of them? I want to get you a lot of, and I know you. I and mean, Ridwick, man. Now that I've known of these two, what else is Ridwick directed oh, yeah. and written? Yeah. Yeah. So let us know uh, what the next classic Dillop and Company films that we should watch are down below.